You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. For the community, by the community. entered the eating season. I'm Sarah Connor and you're watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's episode I am joined by Louise Alvin of Cafe Louise Catering and she's going to help us to have a figure friendlier Thanksgiving. Louise, thank you for joining me. You're welcome. So we have quite a spread. <laughs> so we need some help in tweaking to make things uh, maybe not quite so decadent on Thanksgiving Day. So um, okay. Let's define figure friendlier. Um, um, just to me, what's most important and always has been important is maintaining flavors that mm -hmm. we're so used to. However, removing some of the excess fat and calories. So not dieting on Thanksgiving, because no one wants to diet on Thanksgiving. Absolutely not. But just maybe adjusting a little bit so it's not quite so bad. Right. Or hard, so you know. A little more Tough. heart healthy all around mm -hmm. that we're all more conscious of nowadays and, um, and yet still maintaining some wonderful flavors that yes. we're so used so to. It still tastes good. We're not, we're not eating, you know, dry rye crackers or anything. We're still having, I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful spread. So um, why don't we start from this end of the table? Why don't you tell us what, what you brought okay. and then we can go through them one by one. We bro roasted a turkey that has been brined, and we'll talk a little bit about the brining okay. and the effects of both flavor-wise, um, as well as there's a belief that it takes out some impurities. It adds a lot of liquid, always creates a really moist turkey. Okay. Uh, we brought traditional and uh, a little different twist on green bean casserole, which this dish is usually loaded with fat. Um, this little can alone of French's fried, French fried onion rings has about 500 calories. Um, just in the can of topping. Just in this can just of in the topping, topping. Let alone the saturated fats. Oh my gosh. It's deep fried. So we so need to tweak that. <laughs> yes. Then we have sweet potato casserole, mm -hmm. a more traditional with marshmallow, lots of butter. Mm -hmm. And this one is roasted with maple syrup. Okay. So it has a touch of butter um, and maple syrup, so it still has some wonderful flavors. Okay. Um, and then we have a traditional stuffing, mm -hmm. and traditional stuffing for um, people is different. You know, some people right. like it with meat, some people like it with oysters, some people like it with mushrooms. Um, so it's, this is a more traditional type stuffing. And then this is a grain dish that you can use as a stuffing, as well as it's a wonderful dish in case you have vegetarians. Very good. And then we brought an apple pie. A tweaked uh, apple pie. A tweaked apple pie with um, white whole wheat flour. Okay. Um, and this has less sugar. This apple pie is about 350 calories um, versus regular apple pie is probably about 500. Okay. Well, let's start from here and get some, some details of all these goodies that we have. So this is, this is our turkey, and it's really, I want to point out, um, the way you dressed it. I love how it's, it, it, there's lettuce as your greens on the tray and then just fresh herbs. It's really fresh lovely. Herbs. So tell me about brining. I, I have attempted brining, but I didn't know some of the, the heart healthy aspects of it. I brought a trusty bucket. <laughs> And this so, is, you need a tub. <laughs> yes, a big tub. And this is obviously something that most people would not have at home. You yeah. could probably get it from the local grocery store or deli, okay. ask them to save. They might have pickles that come in buckets this big, right. and they could perhaps save them. Like, we go through buckets all the time and, you know, recycle them, but then we save them this time of year. Okay. And a brining liquid is basically... All sorts uh, of goodies floating around in there. Yes, lots All of right. water, but then it's equal parts of salt to sugar. Actually, some sugar. people, I've read different things. Some people say a little extra salt, others people say a little extra sugar. Interesting. 
Interesting. You need I both. Never used sugar. So usually okay. what I do when I start out with this is warm water with my salt and sugar and then I blend it so that they melt together. Now how much salt and sugar are we talking? Like for in a bucket this, like this. In this bucket and you can fit two small 10 to 12 pound turkeys in okay. a bucket of this size. And this is at least a five gallon bucket. Okay. Um, three to four cups of sugar as well as salt. So you're really putting a lot in the water that's surrounding the turkey. Exactly. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in there. You can't, I mean, you can see the stuff floating in there. Yes. But um, you can't really tell that there's so much. A little bit of citrus salt. juice, mm -hmm. and then we actually add um, some lemon rind, celery, um, peppercorns, mm -hmm. onion. Usually I add fresh rosemary, sprigs of thyme. So the things that you might use, like if you're making a broth and cooking up a exactly. turkey or something, you just put those in exactly. there. Exactly. Okay. You know, and the other thing that I like about, I, somewhere I heard this, it, it was some show about preparing for Thanksgiving, and they talked about if you have a big crowd, you can do two smaller turkeys, they qu cook quicker, yep. and you can fit both of them in your oven versus trying to do... A, 25, a huge monster turkey. one exactly. that takes forever to cook. Exactly. So that would save you some time is to do two smaller ones. And then usually it's brined um, minimum overnight. It's best if it's a day or two. So you could actually start this like on a Monday or Tuesday. Now the turkey has to be thawed when you put it in there? Yes. Okay. And then, so then you obviously you have to have room in your fridge. Room in your fridge, hopefully the spare fridge. Okay. Or hopefully it's cold enough that you could stick Maybe it outside leave in the it garage. Outside. Okay. Yes. Okay. And then usually when we roast our turkeys, I will add, once it's taken out of the brining mm -hmm. bucket, it needs to immediately go into the oven. It can't okay. sit because then all the liquid that it's, it has absorbed over the day or two, if it sits for hours, all that liquid will come back out and it defeats the whole purpose of brining. All right, so you have to keep it in the liquid and right when you're ready to cook it, you take it out, put it on its tray, yes. pop it in the oven. And okay. I never stuff a turkey with actual stuffing. They say that's um, really not safe right. anymore. Right. Um, so usually I'll stuff the body with onion, um, whatever mm -hmm. kind of fruit. Uh, we'll cut up oranges. Okay. Um, apples are good both in the front and the back. Okay, so you can just add some flavoring in And there. then my fresh herbs, I will take and put them under the skin. Oh, interesting. Like it, it, the skin, when it's right. raw, you know, it, it it's real pliable, so you can just put weave it, it in. There. Yeah. Now that's opposed to the traditional, of the traditional butter. way. <laughs> so we, you said the brining takes out the impurities. Plus, you don't have what are we not putting on there that traditionally you might? Butter. Butter. <laughs> Both so under the skin under as the skin, well as on top. <laughs> you're putting butter under the skin, and you're putting butter on the on the turkey. Okay. So you're you're eliminating that fat component. Exactly. But you still get a nicely browned. Yes. And juicy, tasty turkey. If you want, sometimes I will add a little bit of white wine in the bottom of the pan to okay. create some moisture, uh, since you don't have that the extra fat of right, the butter. Right, it's melting over it. Um, right. Until it starts to render its own its own mm -hmm. fat. And then you just baste it. Right. Okay. What about green beans? The green I'm, beans. I'm intrigued by this. <laughs> <clears throat> you know, put that right there. Right, right. there. Right on the hips. <laughs> So traditional green bean casserole. So this uh, is the traditional which is one. The front I'll one. hold that up so we can get a shot of the traditional. The traditional one is made with the cream of mushroom soup that you would add. This little pan has one whole can of these fried onions on top. The whole uh, can. Exactly. Is on this. Okay. And this isn't that big of a casserole. No. Okay. And at Cafe Louise, how we do our traditional take mm -hmm. on green bean casserole, I think is maybe even worse. We use a heavy cream. <laughs> a heavy cream sauce with sautéed mushrooms, some wild mushrooms, okay. All right. um, and we do our own um, crispy onions, onions, crispy onions on top. Okay, and then the different take. They look very the similar. Tweaking. The so tweaking. We're tweaking again. We're not dieting. We're just tweaking. Is making a cream sauce, but with low-fat milk. Okay. Sautéing mushrooms, either balsamic or Worcestershire, a little bit of white wine always adds. Nice, okay. lots of flavor to it. All right. And uh, we did some onions as well. And then the onions inside, but I mean the onions on top, mm -hmm. we did them in flour and pan sauteed in a little bit of butter. Okay. So, so you don't have all of the stuff that comes in the can. Right. On the onions. So the fat content in the traditional is about 21%. This is about half. 
about 11%. See, that's great, but it's still tasty. Right. Calorie-wise on this one, it's maybe mm -hmm. 300 calories per serving. This is maybe two and change, Okay. two in the so teens. So that's, that's about, a, you're cutting a third, third of the calories, half of the fat. Right. That's great. What about the sweet potatoes? The sweet potatoes, the, uh, the traditional, while you're talking about is it. just loaded yummy. with... This was cooked a little bit early, so the... <laughs> The marshmallows would be puffy if they had come they right out of the... They were beautiful and puffy, and they kind yeah. of melted down in transit. Um, tons of butter. Okay. And, That's of course, some cinnamon and things. That's what makes this yummy, gooey You can see the... Sauce. We can see the fat. Yes, we can see, we can see it. <laughs> and then at the last minute, you top it with... Completely topped with the marshmallows, mm -hmm. and that kind of browns up and looks poofy and beautiful. Right. Okay. And then... The and this once again is at about five grams of fat and about 300 calories per serving. Okay. This one is roasted sweet potatoes, a touch of butter, and maple syrup. Okay, so it's kind of a glaze. Yes, really. so More it's, than a, it still a has some wonderful flavors. Uh -huh. A touch of lemon juice, which really brings out, the, brings out makes it come alive like okay. in, in your mouth. Uh, this one is about two grams of fat and just under 100 calories per serving. See, that's great. And I love roasted sweet potatoes. So do I. And, and the salt with the sweet, you know, if you sprinkle a little salt on it, it's so yummy. And this, we've also done a take where it's, we just call it roasted winter vegetables. So if you wanted to embellish this, mm -hmm. parsnips, um, all kinds of squash, so the butternut add, squash, acorn squash. What you might have on hand. Exactly. Okay. And Carrots are way. wonderful roasted. Right. Have okay. wonderful, especially if the, it, you can caramelize the sugars if it's a high enough heat in the oven. Yeah, and I love that there. flavor. So it's, it's, it's borderline, almost like burnt crispy, but it just right, comes right. alive Right, right. It doesn't matter if it gets even a little overdone because it's so yummy. Right. So, yeah. stuffing. We have, now, this is more an alternative versus tweaking, but here's our traditional stuffing. But we can talk about tweaking this. Traditional okay. stuffing, Pepperidge Farm package of stuffing. It's, of course, it's all carbohydrates because it's, right. it's all it's bread. bread. Mm -hmm. It's about 177 calories per serving before you do anything to it. Right. Um, usually, it's you, you saute your vegetables in butter. In butter, lots maybe of butter. Add some white yep. wine or sherry. Um, what you could do, a way of lightening this up, is what we call sweating your vegetables. So the celery. So what that means Sweat is, your vegetable. <laughs> you could actually sweat it out. <laughs> just a little bit of broth in the bottom of your saute pan. Okay. Throw the vegetables in, but cover it. So they almost kind of steam. So you're really steaming it versus sautéing it in fat. Right. I like that because then you're adding other stuff to the stuffing anyway. Right. So you don't really need that extra. And if fat. people like sausage stuffing, one way to lighten it up is to use turkey turkey sausage or there's right. chicken A lower apple fat sausage. Alternate. There's wonderful sausages, you know, chicken mm -hmm. and turkey that have uh, fruits and other flavors in them, smoky flavors that would really, you know, right, would be add nice. a lot, and, and you wouldn't miss. The pork. The buttery and the pork flavor. That's excellent. Okay, so now we have this. Let's get a shot of this. This one has some dried cranberries, basmati rice, wild rice, quinoa, pomegranate, and then there's green onion and carrot. I've left it sort of as a grain dish. Mm -hmm. um, you could tighten it up with a little bit of panko breadcrumbs, add a little more um, chicken or turkey broth. So, so it would be a little more, more of a stuffing, stuffing. consistency. Okay. Okay. This is perfect if you have vegetarians coming and you wanted something substantial mm -hmm. because quinoa is a perfect protein, so they have protein as well as um, other grains okay. in here and some um, fruit. So we're going to talk about dessert because you can't forget dessert. But before we do that, I want to make um, a request or just remind folks that um, I know at my table at Thanksgiving we have tons of food, more food than we could possibly ever eat, and there are a lot of people in our community and in community, communities across the country that really need some help this time of year with food, and, and actually all year round. So uh, what I'm going to try and do with my family is when I have people over for meals is to ask everyone to maybe just bring a canned good or a box of cereal or a jar of peanut butter or something that um, we can donate to the West Hartford Food Pantry to help those of our, in our community who are in, in need and help of some assistance during the holidays. Um, so that's my plan and I hope that, that maybe a few uh, folks out there will, will join me in supporting the food pantry and food pantries across the country if you're watching this online. So, apple pie. Apple pie. Yes, apple pie. 
What have we done? To, now, you said you tweaked it. Yes, yes. we tweaked it. Because it looks the same. It looks like a normal apple pie. <laughs> it doesn't look like a diet apple pie. It's basically a normal apple pie. Okay. <laughs> Except what we used was um, a white whole wheat flour. Okay, so explain so what that is. It's, um, it's is it actually, bleached? It's not bleached. It's not bleached. So okay. it is whole wheat, so you have the whole grain. So it counts as a whole grain. Exactly. All right. um, it's cultivated in the spring, so it's pale green. So it okay. doesn't have that deep red color, okay. and it's much lighter and more closely resembles bleached white flour. All right. Um, and in baking, it acts just about the same as regular white flour. Okay. And the texture pretty much is the same as a finished product. Right. Yes. Okay. I did a little taste test. I'm, I'm, I'm feeding you the... <laughs> <laughs> I, we did a taste test last night. I was intrigued by this whole wheat flour. Um, Louise... And your, your assistant, Carolyn, told me about this. And um, so we made chocolate chip cookies last night, the same recipe we always make so that we had kind of a baseline comparison. And um, the dough was a little bit different. The dough was a little bit drier. Um, but when they baked up, the only difference was they were just slightly crispier. But they were still just as yummy. So that's great. So it adds fiber. Yeah, I think when, when you're experimenting with this, you just need to be a little more conscious of the liquid. Since it is a mm -hmm. whole wheat, it might absorb, it's absorb more. more so of the liquid. So you might need to add a little more liquid. Okay. So you um, made your pie crust with this? Yes. Okay. Um, and the apples, you know, apple pies, this time of year, you know, the apples are abundant, so it's nice yes. to use two or three different types. Okay. Um, one of my favorites is the Macallans. Um, I love Granny Smith. I kind of like the tartness, the tart. as well mm -hmm. as the soft kind of sweetness of Mac, Macintosh. And, and you can just mix those all up together. Mix them up. It does right. have less sugar, and um, as Chef Carolyn and I were discussing, apple pie... They, it has its natural flavors, so mm -hmm. I don't think it's one pie that needs a ton of sugar added to it. No, maybe a little cinnamon with the apples. Right. Mm -hmm. um, so this pie actually is about 350 calories per slice. Traditional apple pie um, is usually closer to 500. Wow, that's a big difference. So That's great. Yeah. Okay, so now we, we have all this food, and I remember my first Thanksgiving um, when I was married, and I did Thanksgiving, and I got really ambitious, and I did lots and lots of dishes, and by the time the table was set and spread with the food, I was really <laughs> crabby and really tired, and it, you know, I wasn't a heck of a lot of fun at that point. <laughs> so how do we avoid that? How do we get all of this done um, and still you know, those of us who are cooking can enjoy the holiday. What are your tricks as a caterer to plan ahead? What can we do ahead? Plan ahead, do your shopping list as well as as much of the shopping as possible the weekend before. Okay. Um, you could actually start um, Monday, you could probably even do baking. Certain baking mm -hmm. is fine, you know, the apple pie would be fine for a few days. Now how do you store apple pie? Do you have to put that in the fridge? No. You don't? Okay. We do not. Okay. For a day or two, I think it would be That's fine in just a okay. cool place and okay. then warm it up prior to serving. Okay. Just, that's how I like my pie. I right. like it warmed up. Um, and then most of these dishes you could do Tuesday and Wednesday, including mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes, too. Yes. That's great, because then you're not peeling and slight, you know. Yeah, it's crazy with it the pots crazy. and pans that day <laughs> up. Usually, um, I basically just stick my turkey in there, take it out of the brining bucket, you know, mm -hmm. stuff it with the fruit and and um, onions and stuff, and uh, that's like the most laborious thing I do um, Thanksgiving okay. Day. So you have all of the extra side dishes and things done ahead. And I like the baking. mashed potatoes done in advance because then you do them in a casserole, stick them in the oven, they get brown and crispy on top, and I just love that, you know, that brown and right. crispiness again. And then gravy, you can do gravy. And we don't have gravy on the table, but if you're going to well, do, you do gravy, Well, of course, because obviously. I bring it home from Cafe Louise. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, so you told me the thing that you sell the most of at the holidays is gravy. It's gravy. No one wants gallons to make gravy. and gallons of gravy that we sell by the quart because uh -huh. uh, people are intimidated by making, by making gravy. gravy. And it's a pain to make it. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, if you're trying to do it with the pan drippings and you just took the turkey out and you have to hurry up and make the gravy and right. keep everything else warm. And that's and a mess. It's actually a messy job. Yeah. Gravy. Okay. So, um, so great tips on how to make all these things. Um, I Can you give me recipes that I can post on my sure. website? Sure. Okay. If you want to get recipes for how to do some of these dishes, you can go to sarahconnor.net. 
If you just don't want to cook or you want some more advice, you can go to CafeLouise.com, right? Yes. And you do catering for all the holidays. Yes, we do. Yes. And, and um, you do variations all the on side all side dishes. These. Yes, we can brine the turkey for you or yeah. roast it and carve it. or Right. And then you're really not stressed out at Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> you can really enjoy your day. Yes. Um, should we taste something? What should we taste? Sure. I want to taste the salad. Okay. I'm going to have a sweet potato. You're going to try the sweet potatoes here. Thank there you. Go. So don't forget the West Hartford Food Pantry as you're planning your, your holidays and think, doing your shopping. Just pick up a couple extra cans of things. They particularly look for proteins. They look for um, you know, things like rice, beans, uh, peanut butter, all, all of those sorts of things. This has been fantastic. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for preparing, preparing all of these, this food. I'm going to give it a taste. Mmm, that is really good. I and love grains. And the crunch from the pomegranate crunchy, yep. and is that the, the pomegranate veggies that are in there. Yes. It's delicious. And you could add something to this. You could add meat if you wanted to. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I leftover turkey. Of course. Yeah, you could chop up some turkey. I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life and Style with Sarah. Again, if you want more information about what we talked about, you can go to CafeLouise.com and contact Louise directly. Or you can go to my website, SarahConnor.net, and I will have some recipes and tips that we talked about today available for you there. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode of Life and Style with Sarah.